I'd like to think that every home needs a NAS server, somewhere to back up your photos, your cat movies, stream movies from, and possibly edit from if you're a content creator. Today, we'll pull together some consumer hardware and build out an entry-level 8TB NAS with 10 gig networking with Unraid as our server OS. Our build today will leverage an i5-8500 CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, 5 2TB hard drives, and 10 gig networking. Come with us as we assemble a NAS that beats the pants off of an out-of-the-box solution like a Synology with more power to transcode, fast networking, more drive bays than a consumer unit, with plenty of upgradability down the line. Let's get into it. All right, let's talk about some of the parts for today's build. I've got five two terabyte drives. We've got 32 gigabytes of uh, mixed uh, RAM. An EVGA 450 watt power supply. LGA 1151 motherboard. This one specifically I chose because it's got six SATA ports. So for our five discs, we won't need to add in any sort of SATA addition cards. We're also going to utilize this NIC Giga 10 gigabit adapter. For our cache drive and OS drive, we're going to rock this Intel 512 gigabyte NVMe. And then the CPU for our build is this i5-8500. It's going to be nice because especially if we're putting together a Plex machine, it's going to have that IP IGPU that helps us encode video. The case for this build is a Dark Rock $90 case I found on Amazon. Came with four fans already installed and has room for 10 three and a half inch drives. So not a bad looking case for 90 bucks. Plus it holds 10 drives, plenty of space for future upgrades. Some notes as we continue with our build. We're getting our drives into the sleds here. And one of the things to note in this case here from Amazon is your drives go into these kind of caddy sort of deals. And there's a ton of hardware. There's no easy, quick disconnect types of things. And then you'll note these tabs here slide into the respective slots here on the motherboard. So if you're somebody who likes to swap drives all the time, this isn't going to be the case for you because you've got to unscrew several different screws before you can pull your drives out of here. We've also got our motherboard put together. We've got our NVMe, our CPU cooler, and our RAM installed. We're moving right along. All right, as we wrap up the build process here, we've got everything connected, all of our SATA connectors connected, all of our drives are inserted, our power supply is in, our 10 gig NIC is in. All right, so some other cool facts as we built out this case. There's two, four, six, eight drives here, can be held up front, nine, 10 drives, and then over on the back side, don't mind all those cables. There's another couple of three and a half inch slots down here. Uh, so that would be 12 total. And then over here, we've got room for two, two and a half inch SSDs. So for a budget case, this case is pretty slick. You know, outside of you know, some of the harder to, to do pieces, be careful when you're using 90 degree SATA cables here. They didn't fit real well with this rib in the middle, uh, but the case did come with a whole assortment of hardware, instruction manuals, zip ties for cable management. So all in all, for a cheap case, I would say this thing's pretty awesome. And it's even got the ability to mount your GPU upright if you so choose. Nice little case here. Yeah. All right, it's all back together. Let's, uh, let's see if she boots. I see a light come on. That's good news. Let's see if she posts. Come on, baby. Oh, entering setup. Perfect. F1. Let's get in there.
First thing to do when first booting a new Unraid install is to assign your drives into an array. For this specific machine, I set it up as one parity drive with four data drives or a RAID 5 array. After assigning the drives to an array, I then selected the NVMe drive and assigned it as our cache disk. After all of these steps are completed, you can start your array and Unraid will calculate parity and set up your default shares. We'll be back after parity is calculated and the server is ready to be utilized. All right, now that our server is all set up, our parity check is complete, let's, uh, let's get into some benchmarks here real quick. What we'll do today is we will copy over a couple of big files just to showcase, hey, we've got 10G speeds, and then we can run through a little bit of the App Store and some use case scenarios for your NAS server. So let's take a peek here and run an iPerf3. Right, like this we're getting one one gigabyte per second, exactly what we should be getting out of it. Run it again. Exactly where we should be. Good deal. So these two files here are 27 gigabytes. Let's drag and drop and see what kind of speeds we get. You can see here in the activity monitor that we're writing 800 plus 950 megabytes a second. Uh, next, we're going to take this Seattle folder, and it's a bunch of photographs. And total folder size is a little over 14 and a half gigabytes. All right, so we just completed our photo transfer, hundreds of files, about 48 megabytes a piece, bunch of raw files from a Sony camera. All right, let's take a peek here at the Unraid overview. This won't be a comprehensive overview of the Unraid OS because there's a lot of you that may never want to use the Unraid tool. It's a great tool. In my opinion, it's a $50 license that pays for itself after a couple of years. I've used Unraid myself personally since around 2019 and probably one of the best pieces of software I've ever purchased. So here on Unraid we've got our dashboard here, a great overview of uh, what our CPU usage is doing. We've got a GPU plugin available as well so you can monitor if your iGPU is being used for transcoding, um, an interface uh, overview for your Ethernet an overview of all your disks in the array, as well as their health. Here on the main page, we've got again an overview of all the disks in the system. Total space used, total space free. You can also overview our cache drive. 
This is the same page where you can stop your array to take it offline, shut down, reboot, or anything else of that nature. Here on the shares page, you can see once you get an Unraid uh, up and running and you've created your array and have it going or created a pool and gotten a pool going, you'll get a set of default shares for this machine. And within these default shares, we've got app data where all your Docker containers are stored. A data is just your standard data folder where you can start drag and dropping your stuff. Um, domains is VM data and then system obviously system data you can add a share and manually create one so in this instance if we wanted to create a share for let's say editing and we wanted to edit 4k off this NAS uh, we might say this is the editing folder and we can call it edit and where do we want this well we don't want it stored on the slow spinning disks so we can say hey let's keep everything in the edit folder on our fast NVMe storage and let's add the share and then down here to make that share available or so that we can see it on uh, Windows Explorer or in the Mac Finder we need to change export to yes and apply. You can also restrict uh, the security down here so if you've got multiple users uh, for your Unraid server you can specify who can access what folders um, so now if we go back to shares, you can see we've got this edit folder and it's on the cache. I've set up our current data folder um, to be where anything that is moved to the data folder immediately writes to the cache drive. So you'll get your 10 G speeds and then overnight that same data then is moved from the cache into your spinning disk or the array. Users tab, we could set up our users here and permissions. So here on settings, we've got a whole slew of settings available to us. We've got UPS settings, so if you've got your server plugged into a UPS by a USB cable, you can see on your dashboard page where exactly you're at in terms of total backup time. We've got an NFS uh, share, SMB settings, FTP settings, so lots of stuff available down here. In plugins, there's a whole slew of third-party plugins available as well for your Unraid server. Docker, in this instance here, we've only got one container running on this server right now. We've got a crafty container for Minecraft. VMs, here's the app store for Unraid. So thousands, more than 2,000 applications available. Um, anything from AI, um, video game servers as well so if you're a big fan of Minecraft like we are in this house there's a whole lot of pre-built docker containers for Minecraft uh, there's amp server manager tons of stuff available um, if you're into home labbing there's tons of containers available that cater to you as well there's a cool stats tab and then some system tools as well so here is the tab of my personal Unraid server here. You can see I've got uh, several containers. Some are running, some are not. Um, but some containers that I use is the image container uh, for photo sharing, photo review, um, OpenAI web uh, UI, uh, some PHP servers, obviously Plex Media server, uh, Postgres and WireGuard for VPN back into my own home network. Landcache is super awesome as well, so a really, really strong container uh, to run on your own NAS if you've got multiple gaming PCs or if you've got, say, multiple kids in the house and each one has a Steam account to be able to cache the same game so that one PC downloads it and then that game is cached locally on your network attached storage device and then any other device can be set up to pull down that same thing. Um, here is a great uh, container that I run, the OpenAI web container, and uh, then I run on my little Mac Mini M4, um, just some LLMs, so really cool to have it here all locally. Obviously Plex is a real winner, and then Image uh, to showcase and share and review photos from you, your family, anybody else.
All right, so what's the pros of a build like this? Well, one, it saves money. You're not going to Dell and buying some crazy enterprise level expensive server. It's gonna help you learn. Plenty of home lab containers are available in the Unraid App Store. Lots of, lots of fun containers. It helps keep the old hardware out of the trash. It's also a great way to test the waters. If you're a, a budding tech enthusiast and you wanna start you know, playing around with some storage, this is a great opportunity for you to test your feet, or sorry, to test the waters. You could also swap in this particular build, you could swap out that 10 gig NIC for a GPU to run local AI. And then last but not least, we've got a huge case here with plenty of expandability down the line. What are some of the cons in a build like this? Well, there's no fancy phone application to pull up your cat photos while you're out at dinner with your two friends. Uh, there's no warranty or phone tech support available on a build like this. You break it, you're going to have to figure out how to fix it. And then at the end of the day, this isn't enterprise hardware, it's consumer hardware. There's no redundant power supplies, there's no ECC memory. So a build like this is going to be perfect for somebody that's just getting into this hobby, that wants to save a couple of bucks because you might have some of this hardware on hand. All in all, the build's relatively cheap. You can swap out parts as you go. You've got a great expandable case that should scale with you and plenty of room in this build for a GPU for local AI. All in all, I think a wonderful build for the price point. Here's a rough out of what something like this would cost if you purchased all of these parts today. Many of you already have some of these parts on hand and it would lower the cost of this build. Other things to think about on a build like this are different operating systems. I used Unraid, I'm familiar with it and feel most comfortable with it. There's nothing stopping you from leveraging Windows storage spaces, TrueNAS, or any other operating systems. Overall performance achieved is great for a build like this, and with the power from the i5, you've got enough grunt to utilize this machine for much more. And I almost forgot to mention, the machine idles right in the 60 watt range without any power tuning.